All right, the other thing I wanted to cover was just a little bit of properties. We have hit these things before, but I'm going to just cover them a little bit more here. Everything in ArcGIS 10 has properties associated with it at all levels, whether they be elements or layers or data frames, all that type of thing. And over here in the table of contents, we have something called study area data frame, which I changed the name of. If you recall, and if I right click on the data frame name, down towards the bottom is the option called properties in the context menu. And this allows you to do a number of things in the data frame, and there's tabs for different sections. If I click on the general tab, this is where you can change the name. And yes, there's a very easy way of changing it in the table of contents. But here's where you can also change it. You can also write a description, uh, identify credits, change the display of the units that you see down the lower right here. So if I didn't want meters, but perhaps um, for whatever reason, I wanted kilometers. And I hit apply and say, OK, then I will start seeing kilometers down here. All right, so right click on the data frame and go to properties, and you will have these tabs to do things like that, such as, uh, and this is where we did our extent indicators. It's uh, where you do, do the name, where you can do the display. If you click on the um, data frame itself, you have there's the option where you can identify whether or not it's um, a fixed scale or fixed extent or dust automatic those types of things okay if we right click on a layer name like cities we get the context menu where we had open up attribute table four but if we go all the way to the bottom again it has the properties and in there we again a general tab where you can change the name and give descriptions and stuff like that you can change display information such as um, transparency you can also change the symbology and change the symbol double clicking on a symbol like that you can pick something entirely different so there's lots of other tabs through there which gives you lots of other options and that's all part of the properties under the layer okay so we know how to change our names and so forth we've buffered some data and we created new outputs all of that we put over here on the far right in our catalog window. We put it inside this geodatabase. What if you want to create a new geodatabase of your own, start from scratch, pull some existing data in, or perhaps it's going to be your results data set? It's very easy to start from scratch with a new geodatabase. What you do is you go to the folder where you want to create the geodatabase. So I'm going to show you quickly. We're going to create a new one in Data New York State. And we're going to right click on that folder name and come down to the new menu. And inside the new menu, there's an option called File Geodatabase. There's also other options down here to create folders, to create layers. You can create a new shape file. So if you're not working geodatabases, you can use a shape file. Let me say File Geodatabase, say New. And notice it puts it right down here at the bottom on my folders list right above the other and then just click on that again and you can give it a new name so this might be your results geodatabase and if you want to put information in there if you want to put existing data from another geodatabase say we want to take the Ontario County right down here feature class we can copy it I just right clicked on the name and come up here and right click on the geo database where I want to put it and say paste and then just say OK and if I expand out my geo database over here you can see it's added it in so it's very easy to cut and paste from other geo databases obviously it would just be redirection if you were doing a clip and a buffer and so forth. And sometimes the next thing is people always ask, what about shapefiles? If I use shapefiles, can I use them in the geodatabase and how do I get them in there? And it's really easy. You right click on the geodatabase again to get the context menu. Come down in here and instead of new, there's actually an option for a feature class import. And that's where you could import a shapefile into this area. 
So let me go find a shape file that I would have. And I'll have to browse for one uh, and see if I can locate an easy shape file. I think the, um, yes, the geology was a shape file. And this is actually a shape file. And that was the geology one. If I click add here, it shows me the original shape file up here. My output is going in there. And then I have to identify a name for it. And I could just call it geology. And here, too, I have a choice to drop fields if I don't want them. I can just click on a field and say, you know, if, if for some reason I really don't want it, I just click on it and uh, remove the field from the output. And when you're done, you just hit OK. And it will grab that shape file. It gives me a warning because it added to this map here, and I needed to project it. But over here on the right-hand side, it created a new one called geology, put it inside my results, and at the same time, it put it into my map over here. Let's just remove that, right-click, and say remove. Okay. So it's that easy to create a new geodatabase. It's that easy to bring a shapefile into it. And it's just as easy to spit these out if I right-clicked on any of my geodatas, my data sets, my feature classes. I can right-click and say export. And then I have an option here to export it to a shape file right there. So if you need to move them out for somebody else that can't read a geodatabase, that's how you do it. Finally, the attribute information. What can we do with that? Let me pop up the uh, I-90 roads information. And let me open up the attribute table. So here's I-90 roads. And what if we wanted to save this information out? I have saved it as a feature class inside my geodatabase, but maybe I want a text file. Maybe I want a listing of all the roads, the county names and the municipality names that the road uh, runs through. And I want it in an Excel spreadsheet for mailing purposes, whatever. The way you can do that from within the attribute table. Let me just move this up a little bit here. Okay. So you want to export the, f the table itself. You come up to the... Uh, options menu here and you click on it and down towards the bottom there's an export option you just click on that and it will pop up the dialog to export either all records or the selected set of records whatever and you give it an output file name if I click here on the browser I can then change the type of output file I can make it a feature uh, a part of the geodatabase I can make it a dbase table I can make it a straight text table and I can just give it any name I want. And I could say uh, I90 uh, MCDs, MCD list. Say save. And it will then put it in here and spit it out to the table. And I can, yes, I could add it back to my map and double check. And let's just close this. Come over here. It's right here in my table of contents. If I right click and open, I will have the same table coming back in. Okay. That's as much as I wanted to cover in the uh, interface basics.